everybody welcome to my channel today we have the next in my index card a day series the prompt is bubbles in this tutorial i'm asking you did i do too much did i go too far or is it just right be sure to leave your answer in the comment section below before we get started if you're not already a subscriber please take the time hit that sub sub subscribe button, click on the bell, and so you'll be notified of upcoming videos. Let's get started. So my base here, I have a coat of gesso to prime the page. Now I'm going to mix a variety of blues, wet on wet, right on top of the gessoed surface. One of the reasons I like to gesso it is so that the colors blend a little bit more. That dark color right there, that is Payne's gray. It's a blue gray. And like I said, I'm going to mix a variety of blues and aquas in the background. They're just mixing, making even more tones of blue. And the gesso allows this to blend easier and not just soak into the raw paper. If you have raw paper, it would soak right in and it would make it very difficult to move. It makes it more difficult to blend. Now I know this looks like a hot mess and that's okay. We are going to add so many more layers don't worry about it at this stage. This is just our base color and our very first layer. Now I'm grabbing a baby wipe and this stencil from the Crafters Workshop, and I'll put the names of these in the description box below. And I'm rubbing the paint off through the stencil. Now this works because I put the gesso on. If you had done the paint on the raw paper, you would be able to lift some, but not a lot. This gives a an interesting effect. And since the prompt is bubbles, I want layers and layers of bubbles. My baby wipe is a little bit dry, so I'm just adding a little bit of water there and just rubbing. Now you wanna do this fairly quickly. Don't wait a long time. The longer you allow the paint to dry, the harder it is for you to lift it and the less successful this technique becomes. Here I'm just having to put a little bit more pressure, but it's not bad. In any areas where I wasn't able to lift, I'm just gonna reach in and do one or two more bubbles. So you can see already that hot mess, first layer of color kind of got pushed back. Now after giving this a quick dry, I'm grabbing this stencil, this is Random Bubbles, and I'm using the same colors and I'm layering another layer of bubbles on here. Here I'm using Prussian Blue, I used Bright Aqua, White, Payne's Gray on the background. But you can use any collection of blues or really any color that you like. It could be greens and blues. It could be oranges and reds. Here I'm doing the same stencil with some bright aqua. The paint that I typically use is the Liquitex Basics. My goal here in the background is to just create layers of bubbles, different size bubbles, different color bubbles, 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 bubbles. So I could have stopped here. But I just continue. I was having fun. I was 
playing with the colors, pushing the limits a little bit. And quite honestly, sometimes we need to do that. It may work out, it may not. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. There, I've added a little bit of white in. That's giving a little bit more contrast, brightening up the page. So I think I've achieved my goal of layers of bubbles. Now when you're going after a prompt, you can do the theme or you could use that prompt in the background. And that's what I've done here. Bubbles are in the background. Now I absolutely love this at this stage. The question for you is, would you have stopped here? And just put on your focal image. Lots of layers, lots of color, lots of interest. But of course, I didn't go. I didn't stop here. I kept going. I edged the page with the makeup sponge. Didn't really like that, so now I'm just edging it with my angle brush just to frame it. And I'm thinking right now, do I want, am I done with the background? Here I'm putting it in this envelope that I make. This keeps the other parts of this substrate clean. And it's just copy paper that I've taped three sides together. Nothing too terribly fancy. Then I grab this template, the circle template. I believe this one's from Fiskars and I will link one that I found in Amazon. And I am going to use it as a stencil and stencil more bubbles, larger shape bubbles, using the aqua, the white, and the Prussian blue. And I'm just layering these bigger bubbles up. But I'm sticking to the same colors. White, bright aqua, Prussian blue, the three main colors here. I'm picking different size bubbles. I'm layering some up. I'm putting some off the page partially. Now when I'm stenciling the paint through here, what I hope you can see is that you can still see the bubbles behind it. I haven't obliterated that. You can, in real life, you can still see hints of what came before. If you are going to leave a comment, just put the minute or time where you think, Karen, you should have stopped. Like this is nine minutes right here. Should I have stopped here? There are so many places in here that legitimately I think I could have stopped. I just wanted to create with the larger bubbles movement across the page. But admittedly, I did lose a lot of that beautiful background. Now, 
Now the background that I'm creating here is one that I could put a multitude of focal images on. I could put the crazy birds or crazy cats or dogs. I could put a Julie Nutting doll. I could put a magazine picture. Pretty much it, anything would go. It's a good basic background. Here I'm using my angle brush and Prussian blue and I'm shading around the um, bright aqua circles and the white circles to give them a little more oomph on the page. And I'm going to continue that. I'm going to do some shading, some highlighting with a lighter color as well with, the, with white. Here I'm going in with some dark, I believe either the Prussian blue or the, or black. I want these bigger circles to stand out from the bubbled background. I will put a link to the video where I teach this shading technique. It takes a little bit of practice, but it's a good one to have and you'll use it on every single page and project you do. So now that I put the circles, would you have stopped there? Now I'm going to do some stamping through my template, through my circles template. I bought my script stamp and I'm stamping, I stamped with black archival on the white. Now I'm using white on some of the darker ones, white paint. I just wanted to add more, but in adding more, did I do too much? Did I make it too busy? So I removed paint through a stencil, I stamped through a stencil, I stenciled through a stencil. So even though this is a small page, I have done a lot of techniques on it. Now I'm taking some silver paint and I'm going to add a little bit of water and then I'm going to splatter with the silver paint, making more shiny bubbles, if you will, on the page. Gotta love the bling. So this dragonfly is a ephemera sticker that I got from the Dollar Tree. And the script from the, with the with black archival paint or ink was a little too dark. So I'm just taking some white and covering it up and pushing that back. So it's not as prevalent. Because even I thought, oh, I did too much. And by cut, knocking that back, the dragonfly, which is light, is going to show up. It's not going to compete with what's directly behind it. And this dragonfly, the pink that's in the middle, really pops against that background. I look through my Courage sentiment pack and all my sentiment packs are digital that you can purchase at ninnysnapkins.com. There is a link in the description box and a coupon code if you keep scrolling down. I play with the orientation. I didn't like keeping it in a rectangle that seemed to go against the circle bubble mode or motif that I had going. So I'm cutting off a lot of the white and I'm going to use those larger bubbles to hold the sentiment. And this says, 
Live your dreams, don't live your fears. And I'm going to use matte medium to glue this down. This has foam on here, so it becomes more 3D, but that's not gonna work in my um, journal. So I'm just gonna use some tape runner here and stick it down flat. There's still a little bit of dimension, but I think I can get away with that. Just FYI, these plastic stickers, don't put the heat tool on them. So if you look at this, do you get the sense of bubbles? Does the prompt come to mind? Be sure to leave a comment below about where, what minute, time, timestamp you would have stopped. There really is no right or wrong. Any place I would have gone or stopped would have worked. I love this page. I hope you love it too. Close-ups follow. Until next time, go get creative.